places to wrap bands around your body to restrict blood flow. Go. The muscles, obviously. Don't know what you were thinking. Some people call it blood flow restriction training. Some people call it occlusion training. I call it choking the biceps. It's the biceps fault if they don't tap. If you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. Talking of which, love Gaethje, but that performance by Habib was masterful and an incredible MMA moment. And so as always, thank you for taking the time to watch my last video for supporting the channel. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much. There is a significant amount of research into blood flow restriction training, including meta-analysis. For example, this piece of work looking at a low intensity BFR and you may notice the name Mike Zordos there. We also have research into specific populations such as athletes and indeed Rolnick and Schoenfeld from this very glorious year looked into physique athletes and indeed they found that BFR for physique athletes is not folly and indeed they communicate certain guidelines. And so if you type BFR into journals you're going to see a plethora of studies into it. Indeed, blood flow restriction is not a new concept in the fitness industry. Fitness influencers have been restricting blood to their brains for years. And so there is a decent wide and in-depth scope of research into BFR. However, of course, I cannot encapsulate all aspects of it in one video. But the main takeaway is that as ridiculous as this looks, it actually has a fairly solid evidence base for muscle growth. Is it a perfect evidence base? No. Is more work needed? Yes. But is it bro science nonsense to choke your biceps? It actually isn't. And indeed, you're going to learn how one of the main applications of BFR is by using a lower intensity, i.e. a lower weight. Does that mean you need to do it for muscle growth? No. And most likely, most people watching this video will never do it, and that's absolutely fine. But there may be some people who may want to look into BFR, and therefore I'm going to project some information to you. And I'll give you a BFR protocol from Popatal at the end of this video, but of course, I'm not telling you to follow that or to do it. I'm just presenting information in an analytical manner for critical thinking. And that's what we call Welcome to the Exercise Science Playlist. So to start, BFR is not better than other tools of training. Indeed, overload methods such as increasing the weight will most likely be the most common application people use to build muscle. But it is a tool of training and it's a different tool that some people may consider. And so BFR is more applicable to the limbs of the body. For example, isolated leg movements and isolated arm movements such as the bicep curl. The strap is attached above the muscle a proximal position. And this is done in order to allow blood to the working muscle, but to restrict blood flow away from the working muscle back to the heart. The external pressure applied is sufficient to maintain arterial inflow while occluding venous outflow of blood distal to the occlusion site. This creates an environment which we can think of as stimulating a potential hypertrophic response, which can actually be incredibly complex when you get into it. And there are certain mechanisms which still need more research as to why that exactly is. However, by restricting blood flow, you are creating a hypoxic environment around the muscle. Allow Lack of oxygen, which creates metabolic byproducts such as lactate, which is what we can think of as metabolic stress. And you, of course, will have heard of the term metabolic stress as being one of these key factors for potentially initiating muscle growth. But essentially, simply broken down, we could state that BFR creates an anabolic environment which may lead to muscle growth. And so of course BFR would be harder to apply to compound movements to restrict blood flow of multiple muscle groups. And indeed Yasuda et al did not find positive results when studying the pec major in relation to the bench press and BFR. And so let's start to dip into the idea that BFR is performed using a lighter weight, a lighter intensity. And Dr. Eddie Joe says this, BFR allows one to undergo similar metabolic stress to limb skeletal muscle with lower mechanical loading intensities compared to higher mechanical loading intensities without BFR. Translation, it may replicate the metabolic stress of using a heavier weight by using a lighter weight. And this can have important applications to, in particular, rehabilitation settings, which I will get to. But again, to be clear, that does not mean that you're suddenly gonna stop using heavier weights to build muscle. Of course, that's gonna be a primary tool. But this is the application of why some people use BFR. And indeed, if we think about all the tools you can use in your training for muscle growth, for hypertrophy, increasing the weight, increasing the repetitions, the tempo of lifting, perhaps decreasing rest times, different tools such as drop sets, and supersets and you can have different protocols such as pyramid training and all these different things that you may use to 
stimulates muscle growth, most likely BFR is going to be pretty low down on the list. And you are going to look like a complete donut in the gym doing it. And in reality, most gyms won't have these bands anyway. And so what are the issues with BFR? Well, of course, safety is important. And if we look at systematic review into BFR, it's perhaps not fair to say that it's inherently dangerous. However, of course, its application is vital. For example, not tightening the band too much is vital. And therefore, if you are considering using BFR, it is advised to learn from someone who is experienced and highly competent with using BFR protocols. And so when it comes to the evidence base into BFR, a protocol we see commonly used in research is 20 to 30% of your one repetition max with the bands. However, there's a range of different research into different areas involving BFR, as I alluded to at the beginning of this video, so it's important that we separate those. We have research into what may be thought of as recreational muscle growth, such as this meta-analysis. And then importantly, we have research into muscle growth, but in a rehabilitation setting. And for me, this is the really interesting application of BFR. People recovering from injuries who may benefit from BFR. The application here is the potential to increase muscle size without using a heavier weight. And of course, for people recovering, rehabilitating with vulnerable muscles, it's pretty clear why that would be a benefit. And then there is a small evidence base into performance. And for example, Taylor et al. 2016, where a 4.5% increase in VO2 max was shown. But again, more work's needed into BFR and performance goals. And so here is a specific application of BFR by Pope et al. BFR resistance exercise might be performed two to three times weekly for the same muscle or muscle groups. However, higher frequencies up to twice daily might be instituted depending on individual training status and goals, volume or duration of BFR exercise and exercise modality. For example, slow walking in conjunction with BFR might be performed twice daily, whereas bilateral knee extensions might be performed two or three times weekly. One approach for resistance exercise is to group BFR sets into blocks in which pressure is constant throughout the duration of each block in order to closely monitor time under occlusion. One block may involve two to four low intensity sets performed until failure with short rest intervals between sets. The total time under occlusion for one block, two to four sets, might be approximately five minutes. And so I've referenced Popatel clearly in this video. And so if you're interested in their communication of programming BFR into blocks, please go and have a look at their discussion at towards the end of that research. But to be clear, if you are a beginner, you don't need to use these bands. You don't need to go anywhere near, near these bands. Just use more traditional meth methods of overload for increasing muscle size. However, for some intermediate to advanced lifters, this may be something that you're interested in. Perhaps just to be a bit creative for a change. Change equals adaptation. You may want to look into new training protocols to, to keep you excited with your training, whatever it may be. One application is for some people who are traveling and perhaps in the hotel gyms, they only have light dumbbells. So some people may use these BFR bands with the lighter load, perhaps if they're traveling. There are many potential different applications as to why some people may use BFR because of course, training is, is highly individual in nature. There's a huge amount of variability. It depends on the person. But of course, BFR is not compulsory or needed or highly important for muscle growth. It is another tool that some people may want to try that does have an evidence base behind it. I'm James Linker, Shredder Sports Science. I'll see you soon.